My fellow Chia nerds, the farmer on the wall is still farming. This is the Gigahorse Compressed uh, farmer that's running Gigahorse 1.8.2-14. He has not yet merged to the 2.0 official Chia farmer software, which is out now. And with that comes official Chia Compressed farming, which I've been doing for a while on the beta so that I can say now that it's officially out. I am completely replotted all compressed C5. There's a couple C6 in here too, but this is all C5. Added some more drives on the USB wall here. You can see there's one missing drive. That's a nice story. That's going to be most of this video's rant. I got a long rant at the end, so I got some angry REFS ranting to do if you want to stick around for that. Everything's back to C5 compressed. I think between the two of them, I'm close to 1.8 petabyte. Probably get up to two petabyte by the time I'm done with all the USB drives here. So I want to start off with a little experiment. Now that I have all these USB drives, I'm thinking, well, I'm using a lot of AC to DC adapters, and I'm not sure if that's going to be better or worse to use a single adapter. But if we follow down here, you'll see this mess of AC DC adapters, and they're pulling about 54 some odd watts. This is just for those four drives that are on the wall here. So if you're using USB drives, that means that in this instance, I have four separate adapters that are doing AC to DC um, conversion. I'm not sure how much less or more efficient that is than one big honking adapter, but we're about to find out. So right now, 53.7, 54, somewhere around there. I mean, it spikes with load there, I'll say 60. So we'll say between 55 and 60 um, standard load. And with video editing magic there, it's all changed. We're now down to one adapter, which surprisingly seems similar, if not worse than those four separate adapters. You can see here, took that one output of this adapter, have a splitter with four. These are all 18 gauge wires. I wouldn't use anything smaller than that because you want to make sure you don't get too hot. This is a 20 amp rated adapter. Each of those individual ones that I had were 1.2, so it's got plenty of uh, room and that might be why this is taking up more maybe if I add more drives up to the 20 maximum it will be less but if going from four adapters to one single adapter not that big of a savings at all if anything is going up you can see it's going to spike maybe less than the 60s and that could be owing to the higher amperage that this can handle but that's all it's actually not four drives I lied it's uh, eight drives two per uh, adapter but they each should be pulling 1.2 amps each, and if we go down here, it's pulling a little more than that. Um, well, it's probably pulling that much, but wattage-wise, we're still at. Oh, uh, well, this time it's a little bit lower, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna chalk all that up to not even noticeable the amount of watts that you could save going from a four adapter to a single adapter AC to DC. Previously uncompressed farmer, which is now fully compressed. I'm sitting at 7294 plots. I should have more than that. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I went with the C5 plots. They are farmable by CPU. Got a little bit of C6 in here just for some experimentation. I was feeling saucy. Uh, they don't seem to make a huge difference, but they do require a little bit more CPU. You can see the farming now. My CPU's got regular spikes. I will not say I'm at the limit of my Ryzen 7 with this many plots, but you can see it's spiking to 100 every time there's a decompress request. Uh, and then the GPU continues to service the Gigahorse farmer on the other one. Nothing's changed there. That farmer I have not touched at all. But this is what you can expect if you're farming C5 plots, over 7,000 of them, on a Ryzen 7 5700. It can handle it easily C5 with, I think I got 120 C6, so... Not a big deal, easy to uh, handle. If we head over to the um, status page, you can see it's now showing the plot size as well as the effective size, which is pretty cool. So I have 578 physical space, 722 effective, which is a 25% increase. So definitely want to do compressed farming. Between the two of them, I've got uh, almost two petabytes, not quite there. Oh, here we go, 1649. It goes up and down based on the pool. Um, harvesters, you can see, again, the Gigahorse Harvester is going to continue to have the slower um, response times. You can see I get about 13 seconds sometimes. It's all under 30, so it's good. Even with CPU farming C5 with the official, that is less compression, but you can see it's coming back in plenty of time. The uh, slowest one I got here is, uh, I think, 7 seconds, so... 
Everything's still within green on the official compressed C5 compressed farm. Still, Giga Horse is going to be slower just because it's got higher compression and stuff. So, the mystery of why I'm missing plots. Well, first we'll start going to the farmer, and you can see 7294. And I said, I seem to have had a lot more plots than that. So I have a script that I run pretty regular to check and make sure that the amount of plots and drives I have are all legit. And it also shows me space if I can fit more plots on. And everything was looking good here the last time I ran it, but it came up with 7499, which you can see is less than 7294 by about a drive's worth. So I said, okay, what's different between when I just now ran it and got 7294 versus when I ran it before and got 7499? And I found out I'm missing the Q drive. So one of my drives is no longer recognized by the operating system which is not good. So I took a look in my trusty um, disk management and I found the Q drive was reporting as raw, which is not good. That means it could not recognize the format of the drive. So I looked online and I found a neat little article that said, hey, check it out. These nerds that are using REFS, um, there's a problem where you may have an issue if it shows up as removable that it's not going to recognize that there's REFS anymore, which is a neat feature for a resilient file system. Not very resilient if it says, oh, I'm going to flip to raw, because why not? The neat thing about Windows 11 is it randomly decides some of these drives, and these are all legit um, removable, but it decides some drives are removable when they're actually SATA drives. So there was another cool little hack I found that says, hey, if your Windows 11 keeps saying your SATA drives are external drives, you can treat them as an internal port. And I had that set for the Q drive. I told it that that bus number for that drive is an internal port. So the operating system was convinced that it was not an, a removable drive. These are my legit removable drives that I have, those USB ones. But it said it was an internal one. So I said, well, what the heck? I might as well try this fix anyway, just to see. So I went to the update catalog. Sure enough, here's a Windows 11 version for that very thing. I went to my downloads and I downloaded that file. And when I ran it, I got this cool little uh, notice that said, hey, this is not applicable for your computer. I guess because it's already been patched since uh, January 2022. So if you decide to use a resilient file system as your... Uh, primary file and you can see I use REFS for everything because it's fun because I'm a nerd this is the first time this happened by the way I've never had an issue with REFS other than right now when it decides to do this raw thing so if my farmer refuses to recognize my REFS drive as anything other than raw it's time to pull it off the wall and bring it over to the plotter so that's exactly what I did so now we're back on the plotter machine and you can see just putting the drive in the system and the SATA, plugging it into SATA, comes up, finds it, says not accessible because the volume repair was not successful. So Windows by default says, oh, this is an NTFS drive, but check this says, nope, I can't do anything with REFS, you're out of luck. So that was not successful. We go back over here, you can see once again it's being seen as raw on this other machine. So whatever happened to the REFS drive is permanent. It messed up the partition somehow. We're gonna do a little trick called enable file integrity. When we try this, we say, take that REFS drive and turn on it. But it says, nope, I can't even find the F drive. I don't know what you're talking about, you're crazy. So the next thing we can try is um, the REFS info. This just basically says, give me the information about the REFS volume that's on there. And at this point it says, I don't know what you're talking about. I need an RC again, it says the volume repairs. So it always tries to, and we can even do this for fun, uh, check disk F, right? And we'll say, let's just do it. It says, no, can't do it because REFS. So by being a nerd and going REFS, I've accepted that I have eliminated most of the uh, check utilities that Windows provides. So now we're kind of left with nothing other than that uh, REFS util we saw. And what we would do is a full auto. So even though it's completely dead, I still can't, and I don't know why I would want these plots back. This is purely just for fun, because I could honestly regenerate the plots in less time than it takes to copy this thing. But because it's REFS and because I'm a nerd, I'm stuck to trying to salvage this uh, stuff in the REFS drive, which I'm positive the files are still there. Windows 11 just decided because it was removable that it was going to kill whatever REFS uh, file cluster setup that it needed. So if I do this, 
this should go through and grab all the files that are in the REFS drive. You can see it's version 3.9. It's not like I'm on an old version that, that shouldn't be able to handle this. It's going to go through and scan and grab all those plots. Again, no normal person would do this. You would just replot the plots and, and redo the drive. Probably in NTFS or some other format. But again, because I'm a nerd, I'm sticking with the REFS. This is the only time I've had this problem. I think it's because it's saw it as a, a removal drive. REFS is clearly not a removable drive format, um, but we'll see what happens. So we'll come back to this and see if it actually manages to uh, recover all the plots because that would be interesting. I mean, it should be able to, but it's frustrating that REFS does not have a simple check disk option that says, hey, check the headers and fix them. The only way to recover is to take all the files off the drive and put them onto another drive. So if you don't have another spare drive, there's nothing you can do. You just, you're out files. So with the magic of time lapse, we're 24 hours ahead, a full day to took to index all those files, which are totally fine, still on the drive, but uh, Windows decided to say is a raw volume. You can see clearly it's not a raw volume. It still has all the files in the REFS uh, um, partition. It's grabbing them off of there, copying a new drive. I'm almost going to let this go because while this was recovering and still copying, I'm, I'm still using the same GPU to create more plots. So my GPU is tied up. I might as well save these plots and put them on another drive. But I got to do all this copy and all this indexing just to get back to the files that were already on this drive. When if REFS had a simple recovery of, hey, check the headers and see if something's messed up, do like a simple check disk for example, I wouldn't have to do any of this because the files were always there. They never had a problem. The only way you can salvage an REFS volume is to copy everything off. It's just frustrating. So that's where I'm at with uh, the REFS drives. I'm still going to use the REFS drives probably because I just like punishment um, and it's fun still. But this is the only time I've had an issue with it. I just want to document it. If you're using REFS for anything, be aware. If you want to get the files off, it's a laborious over 24 hour time period. If it's This is an 18 gig SATA 3 drive. So to fully index it takes 24 hours. Then you got a copy of everything off. So I'm going to guess that's going to be another 24 hours, but I won't put you through that time lapse. Um, but if you have REFS and you have an 18 terabyte drive, this is what you have to do if you have any kind of corruption at all. Even the minorest little things, such as the operating system refusing to see it as anything other than a raw partition.